Hey everyone, it's Misty, and this week we're making a super fun quilt inspired by my daughter. This quilt that you see hanging beside me is inspired by my daughter, Ashlyn. If you have a teenager, I'm sure you've heard all about aesthetic and hers is like beachy desert vibes. She loves all of that. And so this quilt is called Summer Sky and it's got all these great warm tones. I designed this quilt to use yardage, which you can see I have all the beautiful shades stacked here. And let's just go through those. I have peach, nectarine, amber, scone, sienna, and white. These are all Kona solids. And of these first four, you're gonna need three quarters of a yard. Of this beautiful sienna, you'll need one yard. And of the white, you'll need two and a quarter yards to make this beautiful top that you see here. So, like many of the things I design, this was intended for yardage, but you could use pre-cuts because we're using a lot of the same wonderful quick uh, hacks that we have here at Missouri Star. So let's start with our half square triangles. To do that, we are going to use a 10 inch square of our background and of this amber color. All of the half square triangles are made using these two shades. And we are just going to stack them one on top of the other. And then we're going to draw a line corner to corner in both directions. So let's start by doing that. And then we'll make one the other way just like so. Now once I have that done, we're gonna take it to the machine and we're gonna sew a quarter inch on each side. I've gone ahead and done that here just to save us a little bit of time, but you can see there's that center line that I marked both ways and I used um, a contrasting thread for you so you could see those stitches a quarter inch away on either side. And so now we can cut this apart. So it's perfect if you have this five by 15 ruler, you can just lay it right along the side of our 10 inch square. And I like to start by cutting this into squares. So I'll make this cut, Ooh, make sure it stays lined up. And then we'll make this cut across here. And the reason I like to cut both of those first is now I've got these individual squares that I can turn and cut that diagonal line. It just makes it a little bit easier to work with. So we'll just cut all of those apart. And you can see how quickly we get eight half square triangles, which is what I love about this method. So I'm gonna go ahead and take these and we're gonna press them to the dark side. So that just means we're gonna hold the darker fabric and roll that back. So I'll actually flip these over so that I have the dark up, makes it easier to work with. And roll. And roll. I'm just gonna press a few of these because I have some already made. So we'll start there. And then let's go ahead and square these. I'm using a four and a half inch block lock ruler. And when you're using the block lock, you always want the words on the ruler to go on your background side. So that's the white for me. And then we're just gonna trim off this excess so that all of my half square triangles will now measure four and a half inches. So you can see how quick and easy that is. Let's do a couple more just to show you. And on this one, I'm actually gonna rotate it because I need to cut both sides. This is just a little wonky down there. There we go. And taking the time to square these blocks will just save you so much time and headache in the long run. There we go. And let's go ahead and square one more. There we go. All right. So now let's talk about how we're going to assemble those into rows. We have two different ways that the half square triangles are set in this quilt. So if you look in both versions, the 
amber color is going up, but in half of them it's up and to the right, and in the other half it's up and to the left. And there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 of these four and a half inch blocks all the way across our quilt. So let's just go ahead and talk about that layout a little bit. So we know this first row, it's gonna be up and to the right, just like this. And the entire row, 16 across, is gonna go just like that. So let's go ahead and sew a few of these together just so we can make the start of that row. So I'm just gonna fold these together just like this and I'm gonna stitch on this side and take this to the machine. Just gonna take some time, make sure it's lined up. And we can chain piece these in sets of two. There we go. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and open this up here and sew these together just to save some time. There we go. And now you can see there's our first row of half square triangles. Like I said, you would continue so that you have 16 in a row, but let's go ahead and press this so that it's ready for our next one. And I like to press so my seam is hidden behind that dark part of the half square triangle, pressing to the dark side like usual. So there's that one. And now let's go ahead and make our other half square triangle row that's going in the opposite direction. So I have a few more of these done. And so remember this first one is going up and to the right. So we know the next one needs to go up and to the left. So we're just gonna turn it just like so. And we'll do the same thing and sew these in sets just like we did before and press them open. And then once I finish this and had 16 all the way across in both of these versions, you actually need two of each of these strip sets. So keep that in mind. Two going this way with 16 across, two going this way with 16 across. So let's just go ahead and set these aside for now. And now let's move on to this drunkard's path. These little half circles that you see arcing, they kind of look like a sunset or a sunrise depending on the time of day. So let's make those. For those blocks, you're going to use this beautiful Sienna fabric and we have cut them into five inch strips and then cut them down into five inch squares. And we've done the same with some of our background yardage. So you can see I have those set together just like this. And then we're going to use our small drunkard's path template. And that looks just like this. And so I like to start with them stacked up, nice and straight. And I always like to cut this big curve first. So I'm gonna lay this in the bottom corner and cut out this curve. And just take your time. It's a nice gentle curve. There we go. So I have that ready. For the quilt, I'm gonna be using this uh, piece here. And this one I'm gonna set aside for a bonus project that I'll show you later. And then now we need to cut the opposite curve from these pieces here. I nudged them a little bit, so I just wanna make sure that they stay lined up. But we're gonna be using the four and a half line on this ruler. Let me turn this over so you can actually see that mark where it says four and a half right there. There we go. And to begin, I like to cut off these little bits that hang over on the end. Just get those out of my way. And then the same thing, this nice gentle curve on the inside. There we go. All right, so I'm gonna set this dark piece with my other one for my bonus project. And these are the pieces that I need for the quilt itself. So let's go ahead and sew these together. Let me show you how I do it. I like to fold this in half so that I have 
the center of my curve. And I'm gonna do the same thing with my background piece. Fold it in half, give it a little finger press to find the center. And then I like to just kind of line these up to begin with. And you can pin here if you're not comfortable with curves. It's totally okay to put pins. I find they just get in my way and I end up poking myself a lot, so I just take my time. And so I'm actually gonna start, now that I have that marked, and I'm gonna just line this small curve up straight with the top of my large circle here, or half circle here, quarter circle, whatever the right shape is. We'll get there eventually, you know what I mean. I'm gonna take a few stitches, and then I'm gonna gently pull this around. You don't wanna to tug too hard, but we have a little bit of bias. And so once I've uh, taken those first anchoring stitches, I'm gonna pull this around and take that middle point and match it back up. And then I'm just gonna slowly sew this curve with a quarter inch seam. I'm just holding that center point with my finger. And once I get there, I kind of stop. And then I can take this curve again and match it up to the end. And I make it just kind of lay down and continue around. If you have a stiletto or a toothpick or a chopstick, it can be helpful for this narrow end as you're finishing up. But I find if I just take my time, I can stitch it. And so we got all the way around that curve and now we can just press this back. I know it looks kind of crazy, but I'm always so surprised at how nice these lay down. So we're just going to press this. All right, and that looks so great, but let me show you one more time how to do this curve just because I know this is probably the trickiest part of this whole quilt. So I'm gonna grab one more of my quarter circle. We'll just put that finger press right in the center. And then our background piece. And press that center line as well. Now we're gonna line up these two ends. And I'm gonna start stitching right on this straight side. And just take a couple anchoring stitches to get me started. And then I like to pull around that center mark. And we're just gonna ease this in. And I kind of stop again once I get to that middle and start pulling the second half around to line up. You don't want to tug too much. It's just little gentle guidance. All right, so now let's just press this, roll that back. There we go. So now we're gonna take the two of these that we made and we are going to put them together to create our half circles or our little sunset view that we're looking for. And I like to kind of see which sides are my best because they're not always gonna be perfect, but I think I'm happiest with these two to be the top of my little half circle. So I'm gonna line those up and we're just gonna sew a quarter inch seam down this side. There we go, that looks great, and we can press that back. See, just like so. So now for each of these rows, you're going to have eight of these half circles that are going across, and there are three of the Drunkard's Path rows. So that's what you wanna make for that. And then the rest of this quilt is just made up of four and a half inch strips. So let's do a little bit of layout here so you can see how this comes together. Let me clean some of this stuff out of the way and I will show you. So to begin with, we are gonna start with our half square triangles. 
Let me just look at the quilt to make sure I've got it right. We're gonna be up and to the right for our first row. And then next comes this beautiful nectarine stripe, four and a half inches. And so you'll just piece this by the width of the quilt. And then we have this peach color that comes next, just like so. And then we have our half circles. I have a whole row done here, but I'll just fold this in half so you can see. Better slide this up a bit so that it will all fit. There we go. And then after that is this beautiful scone and then a strip of our white. And then you can see in the quilt uh, behind me how this pattern just continues. So then white comes next. And then from there, you're just gonna pay attention to the quilt layout itself. And it's just all pieced together in these beautiful four and a half inch strips. The quilt finishes at 64 by 76. It's perfect for picnics or to throw in the car and take on your adventures. But wait, I do have a little bonus project for you. Remember when we were cutting out our drunkard's path blocks, we had these opposite pieces that we set aside. Well, you can make your same quarter circles, your drunkard's path blocks out of those, and you will actually have enough to make the center section of this table runner twice with your leftover pieces in this quilt. So you'll just need to pick up a little extra of this yardage to do your border, and it just makes this darling little table runner that's just a bonus in this project. So I hope you enjoyed this quilt, and I can't wait to see your version of it. So until next time, have a great week. Hey everyone, it's Misty. Thanks for watching at home. If you aren't already a part of our Missouri Star family, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell if you want a notification every time we release a new video. I'll see you next Monday on the newest episode of At Home.